All right, we're going to take a look today at the imperative uh, in German. Um, as usual, we're going to begin our discussion of the topic by first looking at the uh, at the same or analogous uh, verb form in English, uh, looking at the imperative in English before we move over to a trans. Uh, before we move over into a discussion of the topic uh, in German. Uh, we're going to see that whereas English has only one form of the imperative, German actually has three. Um, and then we're going to take a look at some of the nuances of how to form the imperative in German. So, uh, beginning first with the uh, an examination of English, uh, the imperative in English. Uh, we look at a simple English statement. I say it's a statement in the sense that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stating a fact. I'm not commanding anything. I'm not raising a question. So you take the car. We have the subject in the first position, the verb take, uh, second position, followed by the direct object. Now, when I want to make a command, when I want to form an imperative in English, what I do is I drop off the subject, as we'll see in this slide right here. I drop off the subject you and uh, I start the sentence off with the verb, take the car. Now, we'll do sort of the same thing in German. Normally in German, uh, two out of the three times, we will, uh, actually th all of the times, we will start the, start the uh, imperative sentence, the command, with the verb. So in this way, German is very similar to English. However, uh, that's sort of where the similarities break down. Uh, now, when I say this sentence, take the car in English, I could be referring to my best friend, uh, my roommate, uh, someone who is an authority figure, or I could be referring to a group of people. Uh, three different situations, I use the same statement or same command, take the car. German, however, is going to distinguish those three different situations. Essentially, we're going to find out that German has uh, three forms of the imperative. One, which is the formal form of the imperative, when I refer to a person in authority or a person that I want to show respect for. Whenever I'd use the, whenever I'd use the pronoun Z, I will use a specific type of formal imperative. However, when I uh, use an informal singular, for instance, your roommate, uh, person that you know, you feel comfortable with, uh, you use do, um, I'll use a different type of command form. And finally, when I refer to a group of people, I will use the informal plural form. So three different forms. So let's look at the most simplest one first, and that's actually going to be the formal. So again, we'll start off with a formal statement, and which is based on the English sentence that we looked at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, take the car, or you take the car. Z name das Auto. You take the car. Subject, uh, verb, and the direct object. Now notice that the verb is in the infinitive form. Actually, it's the uh, it's the formal form that uh, agrees with the subject of the sentence. Z Z name das Auto. Uh, now, when I want to make a uh, command out of this, when I want to make it into imperative, I do essentially what is the same thing I did in English, which is I take the, take the verb, put it to the, at the very beginning of the sentence. However, I'm not going to drop the pronoun. Z is going to remain there. Um, and then I follow that up by the direct object. So essentially, the, uh, the verb comes in the first position, the subject, the the pronoun comes in the second position, so the, the pronoun and the verb simply swap positions, and the direct object stays in the same place. Name Z das Auto. Now, so essentially, whenever I make a formal command, I'm just going to switch the pronoun and the verb, and the verb stays in the exact same form, which is the infinitive form, namen. Now, let's look at the same sentence in a uh, do or informal. Uh, command. Du nimmst das Auto. Um, again, subject first position, verb second position, and followed by a direct object third position. Now, Naaman, you'll recall, is a strong verb, so there's going to be a uh, stem vowel change. Naaman goes to nimmst, so for instance, ich nehme, du nimmst, er nimmt, and then wir nehmen. 
back to normal again. So do nims das auto. Uh, you take the car. Now if I want to make a command out of this, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the verb at the beginning of the sentence in the first position. However, um, I'm going to drop out the subject. It's not important. I know I'm talking to you, I'm commanding you, it's understood, so this uh, pronoun's going to be a little redundant. So let's take a look at that slide. So, nim das auto. So, essentially, when we make a informal command, what we're going to do is we're going to put the verb in the first position, we're going to drop out the, uh, the pronoun entirely, just like we do in English, and followed up by the direct object. Now, if there is any type of stem vowel change in the, uh, in the verb, we're going to keep that stem vowel change. If there isn't, then we don't have to worry about it. Um, but what we want to do is we're going to minus, we're going to remove any extra endings on the verbs. If you, you recall from the prior slide, it was do nimst. Well, I'm just going to drop the st off and keep the stem vowel change nim and then follow up by the direct object nim das auto. Now, naming doesn't have umlauts. Uh, certain verbs, of course, do. So let's sort of modify the sentence we've been playing with. Instead of taking the car, we're going to drive the car. Du fährst das Auto. Again, subject, verb, direct object in the accusative case. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to drop out the subject, remove the, remove the personal pronoun du. I'm going to take fast, uh, kick it to the beginning of the sentence in the first position, and follow it up by the direct object das Auto. However, what you're going to see is that I've actually removed the umlauts. Um, I removed the st ending, but also the umlauts. So instead of fair das auto, it's simply fa das auto. So whenever I use a verb that takes umlauts, has a, a stem vowel change, stem vowel change that takes umlauts, and I want to make a command out of it, I'm going to drop the pronoun. I'm going to put the verb at the beginning of the sentence in a second person form, drop the st ending off, and also the umlauts. Fairly simple. Now, finally, the third form is going to be the informal for plural. So if you're referring to a group of people that are your friends. Uh, the regular sentence, uh, the statement, is ihr fahrt das Auto. Y'all drive the car. Um, essentially, again, sort of the same thing that we did in the prior two examples, or prior three examples, we're going to do here. Uh, fat das Auto. Uh, I drop out the personal pronoun. Uh, the verb comes in the first position. However, I'm going to keep the exact same form. It's going to be a second person plural form, and same thing with the imperative. It will essentially be a second person plural form followed by the direct object, fat das Auto. Now, I've occasionally also seen fat ihr das Auto. They still retain the uh, personal pronoun, but that usually only happens in the uh, informal plural. No other place would you re retain, the program, uh, retain the pronoun. So, to summarize, uh, three different types of ways to form commands or imperatives in German. We have the formal, the informal singular, and the informal plural. The formal is the easiest one. We simply swap the pronoun and the verb. So verb comes first position, pronoun comes second. Uh, we have the informal singular, and that will require us to know is there a, a stem vowel change? Do I need to drop umlauts? In any case, we're going to be dropping the personal pronoun. And then finally, we have the informal plural, which we look at right here on the screen, and that is essentially uh, keeping the same verb form and putting it in the first position and dropping the, uh, dropping the pronoun, the subject of the sentence. All right, German imperative verbs.